First car I ever bought, I think 1971, was a Ford Maverick, and the color was Freudian gilt. Pretty clever. Sort of a goldish color. And it's a good thing that it was that color, because within a couple of years, the car started to rust, and at least the color kind of camouflaged the rust. Then I got a Ford Capri, that rusted in a couple of years too. Then I switched to the Japanese cars, and never again did I have a problem with rust. Rust is the great enemy of, of metals, especially of iron. Why didn't the Japanese cars rust? Because they were galvanized. And therein lies an interesting story. And it all starts with a frog. The late 1700s in Italy, Luigi Galvani found that when he attached two dissimilar metals to the leg of a dead frog, the leg would quiver. He called this animal electricity. He thought that the frog leg was somehow generating electricity that was conducted into the metals. His countryman, Alessandro Volta, did not think that this was right. He thought it was the other way around, that it was the metals that were generating the electricity and the frog was just acting as a conductor. And he was right, which he demonstrated by building what he called the voltaic pile, or at least after him it was called the voltaic pile, his name being Alessandro Volta, a series of discs, copper and zinc separated by cardboard soaked in salt, and when a wire connected the bottom to the top, current flowed. This, of course, was the beginning of a battery, and Volta was famous for this discovery, even demonstrating it to Napoleon. You can see it was an impressive demonstration because he hooked up his voltaic battery, connected wires, and he caused something to burst into flame. Napoleon was indeed impressed. So was Humphrey Davy in England, a great chemist. He built a number of batteries and he ran a current through solutions of compounds, metals, and he isolated a number of elements. He also noticed that the zinc discs would slowly corrode. And this gave an idea because in those days, ships were covered on their bottom with copper plates to fend off barnacles and mussels that normally would attach to the wood. But uh, there was a problem here, the copper would corrode and it would have to be replaced. And Davy had an idea because he had noticed that in his battery, the zinc corroded, the copper did not, he thought that the zinc could protect other metals. So he attached zinc bars to the bottom of the ship, to the copper, and indeed it prevented the copper from corroding. But there was a problem. The barnacles and mussels started to reattach because it turns out that when copper corrodes, it releases copper ions into the water and those are toxic to organisms. That's what prevented the mussels and barnacles from attaching. When the copper didn't corrode, they once again attached, and that became a navigational uh, problem. Well, anyway, a French scientist by the name of Stanislas Sorel knew about this work, and he thought that he could put this to use. And he decided that he would take iron, dip it into zinc, and that the zinc would then protect the iron from corroding. He called this process galvanization, paying homage to Luigi Galvani. And he started to promote this process. He even made a paint out of zinc that could be used on iron to prevent it from corroding. Eventually it was used on the Brooklyn Bridge and many, many other famous uh, uh, construction items that were made with, with iron. And uh, all of this goes back to the frog. And today, Galvanization is a widely used process. This is why when you are using nails today, you don't have to worry about them becoming rusty because they have been dipped into zinc. There's a zinc coating on it and the zinc protects the iron. Even if there's a cut in the zinc and the iron should begin to corrode, the zinc will preferentially uh, corrode and protect the iron.
That's the process of galvanization. And uh, maybe I've now galvanized you to look into electrochemistry a bit more.